Hello Calculus Kids, this is Mr. Bean, and today we're going to talk about an Algebra 2 topic about completing the square and long division, polynomial long division. If you don't know how to do either of those two things, this lesson is not going to teach you how to do those things. It might remind you how to do them, but if you've never learned that before, you're in a little bit of some trouble, okay? You, so after this lesson's over, if you still don't know how to complete the square or to do long, do long division, I'm going to put some links in the description of this video. So go ahead and look at those links and you can go to some other lessons where we teach you fully how to do this long division completing the square stuff. So now why are we going to do this? It's because it helps us with the integrand. And remember the integrand is this thing here, blah, 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 blah. It's the thing before the dx that's inside the integrand. It's what we're going to take the antiderivative of, sometimes we aren't able to integrate it. So completing the square and doing polynomial long division, that helps us to manipulate it until it becomes something that we can work with. Okay, so that's the point of what our, we're doing for this lesson. Let's start off with long division. So I'm going to show you uh, long division as well as synthetic division. I'll remind you of both and when you can use synthetic division. Let's start off with long division though. So what we're going to do is take this thing and write it. And I know you're going to have to write small. I tried to give you enough room here, but please write small. And that is, we're going to say x minus 2 is going to divide into 3x cubed minus x squared minus 5x plus 1. And as I'm writing this, I double check to make sure does every term exist on its way down? x cubed, x squared, x, and then a constant number. Yes, it does. If it didn't, I'd have to put a zero there, a zero x, zero x squared to hold as a placeholder. But that's not necessary for this problem. Okay, so now we're going to start dividing. So what I'm going to do is take this x goes into 3x cubed. I'm going to speed this recording up, assuming that you know how to do long division. And then if you don't, you could slow the video down and try and listen a little bit slower. But here's how this works. So I'm going to take 3x cubed divided by x. So what is that going to equal? That equals 3x squared. So this is now 3x squared. Now I take 3x squared and multiply, multiply to the divisor. So that's going to be minus, and I subtract 3x cubed, and then 3x squared times negative 2 is minus 6x squared. And I subtract that, and I get that those cancel, which they should, so boom, that cancels. And then I have negative x squared minus a negative means plus. So negative 1x squared plus 6x squared is positive 5x squared. And I bring down the rest, minus 5x plus 1. Now I start all over again. I take the x, and I make it go into 5x squared. So what is that? That simplifies to 5x. So I'm going to write plus 5x, and then I'm going to take this minus, and I subtract 5x times x is 5x squared. That's good, it cancels. 5x times negative 2 is minus 10x. And then when I combine those, 5x squared minus 5x is done. Negative 5x minus negative means plus. So negative 5x plus 10x is positive 5x, and then plus 1. And now I do it again. I take this x and I divide it into that. So I'm going to say 5x divided by x. Well, that means that's a cancel, and I'm left with a positive 5. So now I say 5 times x is 5x. And then 5 times negative 2 is minus 10. So then I have that cancels, and I have 1. Plus 10 is 11. That there is my remainder. And the way I work with the remainder is I say plus, and then I take my remainder over the original divisor of x minus 2. So what do we do with this? We now can rewrite the integral as this answer up here in red. So I'm going to say 3x squared plus 5x plus 5 plus the remainder over the divisor. And this is all with respect to x. Now this is something I can take the integral of. Now that I've done this long division, I can now figure this out. So take the antiderivative of each step. We're going to get 3x cubed over 3. So that just simplifies to that. Plus 5 over 2x squared plus... 5x. And now this part of it, I'm going to write over here on the side. This would, is where u would equal, don't write it over here on this, this side, but maybe for u would be on the left. This is where u would equal x minus 2. So therefore du would be d is the same thing as dx. So this right here, we just, this is like 11 over u. So I'm going to say plus 11. And then 1 over x minus, 1 over u is the natural log of u plus c. So there's my whole problem. So this little part here is where we go back to taking the antiderivative of, of, of fraction where you have a natural log as your answer. Okay, now before we do number two, I'm going to redo this problem with synthetic notation. So on the left hand side, you'll see this is not going to take up much room. I'm going to show you how this works really quickly. You can use synthetic division. I said syn synthetic substitution. I meant synthetic division. You can use synthetic division if the divisor is linear in this form, x minus a, where a is a constant. If it's in that form where you have an x minus a, then what goes here is a. So in this case, it's a two. So it's the zero, whatever the zero, what makes this thing a zero, that goes right here. And then I have two lines here. I'm gonna have 
the coefficients, three, negative one, negative five, and positive one. And some of you, as I'm writing this, you're thinking, oh yeah, I remember this, I remember this. This makes this fast, I should just say a one, a positive one. Okay, so here's what happens. Here, I do nothing, nothing goes right there. I just bring the three straight down. Two times three is six, add straight down, you get five. Two times five is 10, add straight down, you get five. 2 times 5 is 10, add straight down you get 11, and that is your remainder. So now it used to be x cubed, we're dividing by x, so now these are the coefficients of our answer. So it's now integral of 3x squared, because it used to be cubed, so now it's squared, and then I just count down, plus 5x, plus the constant 5, plus the remainder over the divisor of x minus two. So you can see it's the exact same thing I did here, but instead of this long division, you can use synthetic division. So feel free to use synthetic division, but that only works in the situation where you have x minus a. So it's gotta be linear and then there's no coefficient in front. There actually is a way to use synthetic division when there's a, a, num a number in front, but it takes some practice to get it used to. I'm not gonna worry about teaching you that in this lesson. So we're just gonna use long division on this next one here. Again, write pretty small because we'll use long division and then we have to take the integral after that. Uh, so let me help you get this set up. We're gonna say three X minus five and then divide it into six X to the fourth minus seven X cubed plus X squared plus two X. And then I have to say plus zero at the end. The reason I need a zero is because there was no constant and I need to go all the way down to a constant as a placeholder. Okay, so there's it set up. What I'd like you to do is pause the video and figure out this d new divisor. So don't worry about the integral yet, just get the new way you're gonna rewrite this integral. So that what I would have is my answer is gonna be in red here. So pause now and do this division part. And you can see my answer that I've got written out here. Double check and see if you have the same thing as me. And now let's try and take the antiderivative of this. So that is pretty straightforward until we get to this fraction part of it. So let's just go through this two X to the fourth over four plus X cubed over three plus two X squared over two plus four X. And then we get to this part. So I know I'm going to have a plus 20 natural log of the absolute value of this thing, 3x minus five, but this would require u substitution to do this correctly. So what I would have had to do to get the right answer is I would need to say that u equals three x minus five. So then du equals three dx, or in other words, du over three is what dx equals. So this would become u on bottom, but then this dx is du over three. So I have an over three, so it's 20 over three right there. Okay, so I know that's a little bit confusing. Now this does simplify then. That becomes the one half, that twos cancel, and then that's that's the only thing that simplifies. Oh, plus C. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit more in depth and challenging with some of these things because you've got long division and you have U substitution going on. Now let's try some completing the square and I'm gonna keep it really simple to start off. As a reminder, with completing the square, we want to focus in on X squared plus B X. You complete the square by looking at the quadratic term and making sure that there's a one in front. There can't be a coefficient, so the coefficient just has to be one. And then you look at the linear term bx. And this constant you don't worry about. So to complete the square, what you do is you have x squared plus bx plus so what you add is half of b squared. That's how you complete the square. You add half of that b and then square it, so half the linear terms coefficient. And then why? Because it factors to a nice, perfect square, and it's gonna look like that. Okay, that's completing the square. So let's come back up here, and I'm gonna look just at this denominator. So the denominator here, I'm gonna write with a parenthesis and write x squared plus six x. So there's my quadratic term and my linear term, and I'm gonna leave a space, because I'm gonna write something here, close my parenthesis, and then say plus 10. So I've just rewritten the denominator. That's all I'm doing right now. And now let's take half of six. So see, here's my B. I take half of B and square it. Half of six and then square it. Half of six is three. Squared is a nine. So if I add a nine in there, to keep it balanced inside the denominator, I also subtract a nine. I could add whatever I want as long as I subtract the same thing. Add a thousand, subtract a thousand. Add nine, subtract nine. Okay, so now let's rewrite this. So we've got a new integral that looks like this. We have 
our fraction, 1 over. So now that's a perfect square that can be really written as a quantity squared. Quantity squared. See like this? x plus half of b, quantity squared. x plus half of b is right there. And then we still have the 10 minus 9 is plus 1. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, with respect to x. Now this is really good because now we have something being squared plus 1. Hopefully you recognize that u is going to equal x plus 3. So du is equal to dx. So then this just becomes 1 over u squared plus 1. And then the dx becomes a du. All right, so hopefully you recognize that that is tangent inverse, inverse trig of u. And we know what u is, which is x plus 3, and then plus c. There's our answer for that one. And the idea was complete the square and then see if something else can be done. Does it look like it's something we can work with? And in this case, it was, it was a tangent inverse. Okay, let's go to the next one. So we got some weird stuff going on here. One is that you have to remember that you can only complete the square if x squared has a one in front of it. Right now it has a negative in front of it. So I'm gonna look at this thing that's under the radical. So just the thing that's under the radical, and I'm gonna factor out a negative from that x squared. So now it's a positive x squared. And then I also have to look at the linear term. So instead of a plus 8x, it's now minus 8x. Leave a space and then minus 15. So again, I come when I'm completing the square, I look at x squared and bx, that's all I've got here. And now I'm going to take half of this, which is negative four, and square it and I get 16. So half of negative eight is negative four, but the negative squared is a positive 16. So if I add 16, you'd think, oh, just like I did here, I added nine, subtracted nine, so add 16, subtract 16, but that would be wrong because this is actually not a positive 16. It's a 16 times negative. See, when that negative distributes, it's actually subtracting the 16. So to balance it, I actually add a 16 there. So this is a negative 16, that's a positive 16, now it's balanced. Okay, let's rewrite it. So we have integral of one over, so I have the square root of negative parentheses, x minus half of b, which is four, quantity squared, and then I have a negative 15 plus 16, that's a plus 1. That's perfect, because if we're doing an inverse trig, we want a plus 1. We always want a 1 there. Well, let's rewrite this. Oh, that's with respect to x. So let's rewrite this as the integral 1 over, and then let's say 1 minus x minus 4 quantity squared, because now you can see if the 1 comes first, and then it's subtraction and a square root, that's where we have sine inverse okay and then there's no number in front here with the x there's no it's not like a 3x or a 5x so i don't need to worry about the chain rule right the u substitution that's not necessary to worry about on this one so we're going to go sine inverse of x minus 4 and then it's plus c crazy huh that is the answer to this mess of a thing but we had to use completing the square to rewrite it in a form that we could tell and we could see it now most of the ones you're going to do in this packet are pretty straightforward like this um, and the problem and the hard part is recognizing when you're doing this on like an AP exam, when do you do this? And yet, so you have to be good at recognizing it. We'll talk about that when we get to the last lesson of this unit on recognizing the patterns. So the last one I'm going to give you is actually a pretty hard one. Okay. This is hard. And the reason is because I, I looked at a bunch of AP exams and I, I created a problem that's similar to the ones I saw on the AP exam. Uh, and they're pretty challenging, so let me show you, walk you through this, because I did put some in the test prep section of this lesson. So let's start off with the denominator. I've got my x squared term, my minus 4x. I'm going to leave a space and then say plus 20. And then I will complete the square by taking half of this, which is negative 2, squaring it, and you get a positive 4. So if I add 4 there, I subtract 4 here. Okay, so now let's rewrite my integral. I have 32 on top over on bottom. I'm going to have, this is a nice perfect square. So x minus half of b, half of b is two. Quantity squared, and then 20 minus four is 16. And that's with respect to x. So my problem is that all of my inverse trig stuff, this has to be plus one. Like this looks like it could be tangent, quantity squared. The 32 could just come to the front, but this says plus 16. I need it to be plus one. You can make it be a plus one. All I have to do is multiply it by one over 16. 
If I multiply this by 1 16th, it's now a 1. And as long as I do that on top and on bottom of a fraction, then it works. Okay, so now let's see what we get. We're going to say my new integral is 32 times 1 over 16th just means 32 divided by 16. All right, that's just 2 with respect to x. Okay, so now what's, what do I have on bottom? This 1 16th distributes to both of these things. So I'm going to have a 1 16th times x minus 2 quantity squared plus, and then 16 times 1 16th is just 1. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. I now have a plus 1. This is good, but I still have this weird 1 16th going on. Let's see what we do with that. I'm going to rewrite this again. So again, this is as hard as they get is this problem that we're doing right now. I'm going to rewrite this as, think of this as x minus 2, right? This is x minus 2 squared over 16. That's what this is. Well, if I rewrite that, I could say x minus 2 over 4 quantity squared. See how this and this are the same thing? This x minus 2 quantity, oh, x minus 2 over 4 quantity squared is the same thing as x minus 2 quantity squared over 16. Okay, now I can use u substitution. So let's say u equals, uh, this is just 1 fourth x minus 2 fourths, right? That's what this is. So that's my u. So my du equals 1 fourth dx, or in other words, dx is equal to 4 du. Now I can say the integral is 2 over u squared plus 1, and then my dx is going to be 4 du from my u substitution. And now 2 times 4 is 8. So here's my answer, 8. And then it's 1 over u squared plus 1. That's going to be our tangent, right? Tangent inverse of u. And what was my u? This thing, or let's leave it like that. That's a little bit cleaner right there. x minus 2 over 4, and then plus c. That's as hard as they get. If you understood this and flew through it, awesome. If you struggled a bit with this one, there are a couple of problems on this to practice, but most of the practice problems are going to be a lot more like these examples that I showed you earlier in the lesson. So rock that mastery check, and I'll see you back. If you're an AB student, I'll see you back in our, in our last lesson. If you're a BC student, we got a few more lessons before we get to the end.